Welcome back to Gear of the Week. And man, I got a lot of stuff to show you. We got knives, we got multi-tools, we got organizers and pouches and more. So let's go ahead and get started because we got no time to lose. To start off this video talking about knives and one of the coolest ones I have to show you is this from Vosti. Now this is absolutely a premium offering. We have black wash titanium M390 a very different take on a uh, liner lock and a mill titanium pocket clip all with these sort of like gold accents. So this is a very bling bling kind of knife and it has a compound grind just to top everything off. It is a pretty amazing knife and the action, well, the action is scary. It's, it's so fast, it's actually scary. Um, and I think it has something to do with how this lock actually works. You would think with the button being there, oh, this is a button lock. It's actually not. It's technically a liner lock or what we might call a modified compression lock where the lock is on the back. Now, the difference is when you have a compression lock, you pull it from the opposite side. This functions a lot more like a button lock, which honestly I way prefer to a compression lock design. It basically has a button attached to it. And what's cool about this is if you look at the liner, it, it really has very little angle change here. I think there's, it's hard, to, it's hard to really see it on the inside, but it is really impressive to me how thick that liner is. Must connect all the way back here and still is plenty easy enough for me to press and disengage the lock. Um, not, when I say easy, I don't mean that it's going to be accidental. What I'm saying is that it's much easier than I expect it to be. Now this also has a flipper tab, so it's a flipper, it functions with a button, and I will say this, before you get this knife, make sure you have very good muscle memory to keep your fingers out of the way of this blade because the action on this is scary. It's scary good, and if you're kind of getting used to things and you're trying to learn to keep your fingers out of the path of a blade, I highly recommend something that is not as good when it comes to action as this knife. So this is definitely for the people who already have mastered their muscle memory. Keep that in mind and I think you're going to absolutely love this thing. Now, like I said, it's an ultra premium knife. I don't even know the exact price tag. I will put it right here. It's also quite possible this is currently on sale on Vosteed's website for Christmas. So I will also show you the current price as well on their website. So you can check this out. Very interesting. They have this one. They also have a plain stainless variation with an unfinished, like a more of a um, stonewashed titanium versus the black wash. I have to say I like the black wash a little bit better, but you let me know which one do you think is better, the black wash or the plain? Next up, we have the Kaiser Dogfish. Now, this is a beautiful looking knife, first and foremost. I really like the way this knife looks, and I have to say I'm very much attracted to this pattern that they have on the handle. This is an aluminum handle, which had me kind of thrown initially because the weight felt more than it should be for an aluminum handle, and that's because it is steel liners kind of recessed inside, which is a kind of a nice little touch. This has a button lock and it has multiple forms of deployment. So we have a flipper tab in the back, which is accessed right here. We have a front flipper as well. We can reverse flick the knife and we can thumb flick the knife. So a lot of different options here. And then you can also just whip it out with the button itself. So very, very fidgety. Um, very interesting because of the ergonomics. It really wants you to be in this front kind of position right here with the ramp. And it's very comfortable here, but it, it does not really feel great when you're behind the flipper back here. It's kind of a little crowded. I fall off the edge a little bit. And then when you slide up to the handle, it's okay. It just feels like that's not where it was meant to be. I think really this is the best position. So if you tend to grip your blades like this, this is going to be fantastic. And it's going to be awesome in a pinch grip as well for the same reason with the cutout. So overall, I really like the knife. I've been enjoying it and carrying it a lot, which is strange. Like it's, I think it's a lot of it comes down to the way this knife looks. It is a excellent knife and it just looks fantastic. 
I, it's hard to get it out of my pocket and I really like the flipping action from the back. It really does a very good job. So a nice knife for sure. I love that it's in 154 CM. This is one of my favorite steels uh, in general. I think it's a very easy to recommend steel because it's so easy to sharpen among other things. It's just very balanced. So definitely a, you know, like the combination and it's a good price point for something that has so many different features with a nice pattern. I think it runs about $100. I will put a listing right here from Kaiser's website. Now, right now they may be having a sale, so that might adjust the price a little bit. But overall, I really like the knife. I really, really do. I might even end up keeping it, which I don't keep many knives nowadays, but I definitely uh, would consider this one because I just like the way it feels. I like the way it looks, and I like the way it feels in hand. What do you guys think? Is this something you would consider? or would you skip it? If you've been paying attention to the channel, you will see a video where I talked about discontinued models for Senkut as well as Civivi. And they're unfortunately discontinuing one of my favorite knives ever made by Civivi called the Voltaic. This feels like it was absolutely made for my hands in every way. It is my favorite knife with a flipper tab. It has a little fuller for reflicking it. It's just fantastic. So when I saw they were going out, I was like, no. And I went ahead and I purchased additional copies. I also ended up buying another knife, which is very similar, which I've never tried. So first and foremost, let me show you the different versions of this knife. So now I can show you all of them. So first you have this one, which is the cheapest currently, and it has G10 inlays and it is stainless. Love the way this knife looks. It's got a very futuristic feel to me. I personally, and I'm definitely going to be replacing this clip with a mill titanium clip from Civivi. Great action on this one. No problem with the reverse flick. Once again, absolutely perfect detent on the flipper tab. Just, it's a home run. I love this knife so much. And they make one with a green micarta, I think it's green or black micarta inlay. It might be black. I don't know how they decide what they call the colors. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to tell. But either way, it looks fantastic. And uh, I got that as well. It's possible I might like this more than even the wood variation, just because the grip is so good in this. Oh, yes, yes. Well worth the, what, $42 or $46 that I paid for this, 14C28, with the inlay micarta, as well as, like, steel liner lock, like, frame lock. I mean, shoot, that's a good, that's a, that's a really good, good deal. And I also picked up for a similar price, this model, which I've never tried. So I played with it a little bit. I put everything back in the, in the uh, zipper pouches. And I think had they had more of this style of coloration, I think they probably would have sold more of these things. Um, I like the red and black though. This is a really cool knife. Now I'm trying to remember the exact name. Of course I threw away the boxes, but it has a more neutral handle in comparison to this one, similar in length. And if I'm being honest, I don't know if I like it better, but I think I like it as much as the Voltaic. That's saying something. That's really saying something, honestly. You know what? No, no, I like the Voltaic. You know, it's close. It's really close. I really like this knife. Um, it, this actually got a little bit easier access to the fuller for the reverse flick. How does it? Does it, does it have enough space for me to... Ooh, I can actually thumb flick on that fuller as well. So in some ways, it's a little bit more versatile than the Voltaic. And I think there's a couple of models of this available as well. So I really, really like this knife. I might go back... Honestly, I might go back and buy the other variations. I like it so much. And they make the detent perfect again. Yeah, it's a tough call. That's a tough call. I don't know which one I like better. This looks a little bit better, to be fair. But no, I, I think this is a really good knife as well. I'll put a link and show you the listing and put a link to it. But these are fantastic models. It's sad to see them go, but at least everyone can get them for 50% off. That's a great deal on any of these knives. And I really like the red and black combo. Very, very cool. What do you guys think? What's your favorite? Or is there a model that they're discontinuing that you really wish they would bring back? Let me know. What is your favorite Civivi model that they no longer carry?
Now, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know how much I love multi-tools. In fact, multi-tools are usually my daily driver, not a folding knife. And even though I have really expensive ones, I still end up investing in budget-oriented multi-tools that are compelling in design. They may not always be good in execution or materials, but they're great data points and they're worth knowing about as far as potential future iterations. So this tool really caught my eye because they had kept it so compact and thin. So this is an adjustable wrench multi-tool, which you don't see that many of. And usually when you do, it's combined with some stupid combination of tools that you don't need. This, on the other hand, looks really good. It has a slip joint enabled knife, which came incredibly sharp and is surprisingly comfortable in hand when being used. It also has a flathead driver that's easy to access with a bottle opener. And they kept it like, look, they kept it straight and narrow so that you could actually get into small spots. And they also have a Phillips driver. No more or less than what I would be looking for to complement this tool. And what's really interesting is for the, what is it, $13 that I paid for it, it also comes with a bit kit. The bit kit itself is probably something you'd have to buy for like $9 on Amazon. And this thing actually comes with it. And I like what they've done, which is to combine these two tools to make this bit kit function. Now it's not perfect. You can see there's a little bit of movement here, but it works. And the fact that it's all included for that price is very interesting indeed. Now, do I wish that it fits a lot better here? Absolutely but it's still a really nice consideration. And when you think about the combination for, I don't know, $12, this probably can get enough work done to justify its sub $20 price point. I, I like it. I have to say, I'm, I'm surprised. Now I think the case is completely unnecessary and I certainly wouldn't carry it with, with this holster case, but uh, the size being so narrow really makes it interesting. Let me know, is this something that interests you? Do you think I should continue to explore these unusual yet well-designed budget-oriented multi-tools or should I stick to the big name brands? Let me know. It is awesome to be able to show you one of my favorite series of products from a company called Lockbeat. Now I've had stuff from these guys for years. In fact, they were one of the first things that I covered on the channel and they have continued to improve what they have. And so I wanna show you some of the different things that they now have available in addition to upgrades that they've made on things that I've already had. So first and foremost, you've seen this before. This has been, well, where I keep my life over the last seven or eight months. It has been essential. I have taken it everywhere. I took it to Italy. I take it, it is essential to me as a business owner to have an organized way to do things. And so I keep, um, don't show you things, don't show you things. I keep flashcards in here that I use that I'll take with me, then fill in with the notebook. I have a dot grid notebook, which I still don't wanna show you, as well as a, a calendar that I do use regularly and is very helpful for keeping me on track. Yes, you can do things digitally, but they just don't work the same way. I'm telling you right now, written is best. I also have in here the new uh, four-in-one pen that I've talked about recently. This is from Uni, fantastic little pen. And I found keeping a flashlight with a high CRI has been really good for working at night when I don't want to disturb anyone else. So right now I have a um, Raylite, and this is the XL with the two triple A's, but I think I'm gonna shrink that down and use a standard smaller variation because it's not necessary to have the extra length. So highly recommend this organizer. You can see I've used it quite a bit and it's been fantastic for me. Pretty much, yeah, it's a no brainer recommendation. That thing's fantastic. I also have used a couple of these others as well. So this is actually a watch carrier. I just realized I'm missing something. Where, where's the last, aha, I'll find it. Here, here you go in a second. This is a watch carrier. So I have some watches that I keep in here, another in there and here. And uh, yeah, nice little pouch. It's designed specifically for storing watches. So keeping that in mind, that's what this is designed for. But I would imagine you can use it for a lot of other things. Once again, wax canvas, excellent zippers. I believe these are, well, let's take a look at something. 
yeah, these are YKK zippers, so really good quality zippers. Just a great little pouch for your watches, and if you travel a lot with your watches, that's a good one. Um, let's get over this one. So I haven't really used this much. This is specifically designed for storing pens, so that's a really good, good item as well. They have pouches on the outside, Velcro on one, and then just slot-ins right here. I haven't used that, if I'm being honest, but I have used this, and that's what, one thing I definitely want to talk about. So this might be my favorite new product from the company, and I'll just show you. I, ha I had this that I was using it when I was in Italy, and it has two sides to it. Very, very clever design. So this was my uh, electronics and tool organizer of sorts. So I had my um, little four inch Irwin vice grip, the one I modified, that was in here. Now you can see I have a couple of these little pieces of glass that I got in Murano. We did a little tour and they showed us some of the glass making process and this is one of the things they use. So this is some Murano glass. I'll leave that in there. And uh, we also have some stuff. This is my uh, our little Vaporetto cards from Venice. Very cool, right? And uh, yeah, there were some other things I kept in here as well. But the cool part is if you flip it over, you have access to a lot more uh, storage with elastic components. And this was the middle of that backside. That's a fantastic organizer, I will tell you. And it hangs really well in your bag. It even has two clips on opposite side, which makes me wonder if you can use it kind of like a mini sling if you wanted to. I don't know about that. I pro I might, what worries me about doing that sort of thing is you might leave one of the compartments open which would allow it to all fall out. So if you were good about knowing that, I guess you could probably use this as some sort of sling bag as well. But I've been using it for an in-bag organizer and it worked very, very well. Definitely recommend that. And then this is something I've already done a video on. I had an older generation of this. In fact, let me go grab mine, hold on. Here we go. And I've emptied it of tools mostly. This was the older generation, and I did a video on uh, my little tool organizer. This, the big thing that they changed here is there was like a pass-through, which you got go all the way in, but it didn't really add anything except make it more difficult to fit items on the inside. So I agree with them in what they did, which is to basically seal that and stitch it, which I agree with. Now the items that are in here, the small items, do not slide all the way into the back part of the panel. This has flaps and storage here. It has elastic panels here. This is one of the best small tool rolls I have ever seen, and uh, I cannot recommend enough. It, it works fantastic. It, it really can be loaded up in ways that seem ridiculous. And if you go back to the older video where I did my little tool roll, you'll see just how much stuff I can fit inside this. But what I love is the dimension of this tool roll. It's not that tall. And for that reason, it fits inside a lot of backpacks. It keeps a lot of your gear kind of organized. I cannot recommend this enough. It does come in multiple colors. So it comes in the black like you see here, and it comes in this with the orange. However, because they are so popular, they may be out of stock when you go to find them. So just keep that in mind. You may not be able to get the black. This might be the only one in stock, but I kind of like the brown as well. Let me know, what's your favorite, black, black or, or brown? Now, while we're on the topic of organizers, let me reintroduce a company called Roaring Fire. Now, they have a couple of really cool products out there and it includes a very similar tool roll to what we saw with Lockbee. There are some differences though. For one thing, they have a canvas instead of ripstop in the back. So if you have sharp objects, this is going to be a little bit better for a true tool rack where you have like corners that might rip up the fabric. That's one thing. One thing that's on the negative side is the Lockby has a flap on both edges to keep all your items from falling out either side. This only has it in one direction. So this flap basically keeps everything that's here locked in. So there's nowhere for it to go. You know, you can shake it around, it won't happen. But these pouches here, these you're gonna to wanna to be made aware of. So my recommendation is if you use these pouches, make sure the items are light and they will not have the momentum to be able to go all the way to the other side if you shake it hard. 
So just keeping that in mind, I think you're gonna be okay. Now this also has a zipper compartment right here, which I do like, but you can't really see what's in there. So there's something to be said for that. But once again, canvas, very, very durable. And then the last thing I wanna say is on the outside. Really cool, uh, good um, waxed material, but I can't say I like this uh, adjustment as much. And the reason is you have to lift this side and it can be very difficult when you have items in, in it to do this. And it's a little fiddly to get the strap in it for it to close and then tighten. So I, I really do think they would benefit from doing something more like what they do with the lock B. This is a better solution. So if they were to change that, it would make it better. But even without it, it's a fantastic design and there are some differences in prices and you know, it's a preference too. This one does feel a little thicker and I think that's because it is double-sided canvas on the inside and out. So just keeping that in mind, it feels very rigid, which can be a very good thing as well. So if you have sharp tools, let's say you, have, you do car wood carving for instance, this would be a better solution to store those items than the Lockbee would. So this maybe has a different purpose. And I'll probably end up using them for that, kind of in a, a different context. Different colors, so we have the green, we have black, so this is, sorry, green, and we have like a burgundy color. And then I think there might be even be a black as well. I think though, the, the one that stands out to me is this pouch. This could be one of the best organized pouches for this size I have ever seen. Check this out. So it has a panel here and a place to attach something with a ring. And it also has elastic on the front, but this is really cool. It has elastic panels here with a pouch, but it has this zipper panel out front. So you can put very small loose things and very easy to access. This might be my favorite setup for an organizing pouch about this size, which is about eight inches by six, give or take, that I've ever seen. And I love wax canvas. You know, I really like the Maxpedition pouches. I think they're organized really well, but I much prefer wax canvas to um, the nylon. And this also will attach to Molly webbing as well. Overall, I think this is a home run. I don't really have any qualms with this at all. I even love the fact that they have extra big zippers. Yeah, I have nothing bad to say about this at all. It's just a fantastic organizer. I am definitely gonna be keeping this for myself, for sure. What do you think? Uh, which one would you go with? Uh, I actually kind of think that this is the winner here when it comes to Roaring Fire, but you know what? If they go on sale, I'd probably get a bunch of these as well. Let me know what you think down below. Next, we're gonna talk about the only flashlight that we're gonna to cover today, and that is gonna be the EDC 33. Now, this is from Nightcore, and it is a brand new offering that is in that tactical genre. And it is actually a tactical flashlight. By my approximation, it is. It has a built-in battery that can be recharged with the included Type-C port. Now, this is a waterproof port. This thing is rated up to IP68, meaning it has an independent certification. It also has a really cool uh, lockout feature. So actual physical lockout, which I like quite a bit. So that's really nice. Can't do anything when it's locked out. I'm all about that. Oh, wait, sorry, locked out now. And that's really nice. It also has the ability to quick access to a memorized mode, uh, a reach, a far throwing mode, as well as a super bright mode. And when I say super bright, I am not kidding when I say this is probably one of the brightest lights in its form factor I've ever seen. Now, when I talk about form factor, just take a look at it compared to the Warrior Mini 3. This is one of the smallest 18650 flashlights out there with a tail switch, and it's not that much bigger. Okay, so putting that in mind. This light reaches a maximum output of 4,000 lumens with over 40,000 candela, meaning beam intensity on this is insane, truly. It also has a reach function that lets it, that lets it get uh, 1,700 lumens with 56,000 candela. Huge reach, capable of going out and touching things very, very, very far away, many hundreds of yards. So I'll put exact stats here because I don't remember the exact numbers. That being said, it has a fundamental problem. This light has pushed it beyond 
the point of reasonable output and heat generation. Um, it has a fantastic user interface, and I want to say that. It actually, the fact that they've been able to accomplish what they did with this button, I'm very impressed. Half press gives me the 1700 lumen uh, reach mode, they call it, which is so bright, it barely is picked up by the adjustment on my camera. Whew, crazy. And it also has a 4000 lumen mode, which is what they're calling Lumi Shield right here. And you, what you can see there is there's a center LED, which is the reaching LED, as well as eight that are around it. Pretty cool. Very, very cool. And it, the, the combination is amazing. So half press for the reach and then full press for the loom. And then if you just press once like this, it's really hard to get exactly. You get whatever you have memorized. So I have, I think, the lowest mode here, which is still really bright. And uh, this one will last for a very long time, but you know, you turn it off. Here's my problem, and let me let me just give you an approximation of the current temperature because I did play with it a little bit before this. It's currently sitting at 89 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Now, I'm going to hold press this light. I'm going to try to find. Let me find a good. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to hold press this light, and we're going to let it go for a few seconds, and I'm going to show you what happens for just a few seconds. So not that long, right? Let me just show you what it's at already. Oh, sorry. This is 152 degrees Fahrenheit. I can start to feel the heat in my hand and it shut off on me. 176 degrees Fahrenheit. You watched this light get so hot. I think I might have even burned that. It got so hot, it shut itself off, right? It knows smart, it's smart enough to know what the temperature is and it shuts itself off. But 176 degrees Fahrenheit is insane for a flashlight to reach in that time frame. They have definitely overshot it. They should not be making flashlights this bright with this form factor. There's just not enough physical dimension to dissipate that kind of heat. So I think that although they have done a very cool job with this light making something different and powerful, they have overshot the mark by too much. This is a new technology. It is making very efficient LEDs that can do insane things. That doesn't mean we should. So this would have been a perfectly fine flashlight with a reach mode of, you know, a thousand lumens instead of 1700, and then maybe a total output of maybe 2000, where it could actually manage that heat for a longer period of time. As it sits, this is actually, I would dare say dangerous. Um, does it have an insane output? Will it absolutely blind someone like in the dark? Oh God, yeah, this thing is on a whole nother level, but, I, I cannot recommend this to just anyone. This is something that is borderline on the you need to be kind of know what you got kind of situation. Now, uh, one last thing I'll say is that it does have a very good retention clip and it's set right on top of that kind of sharp edges. So it, it holds very well in the pocket and may even rip up your pants. So there's that as well. Some people actually prefer an ultra strong clip and that is exactly what we have here. The user interface is great. It does tail stand and it does have a really cool type C port built into it. That is IP68 waterproof. But uh, overall, I'd say this is probably worth a skip for most people out there. Now, here we go. Everything that we covered in this video today. Now I have a lot of different gear of the week videos that are part of a playlist you can go see down below. So if you just wanna kind of look at all the different stuff that I've had coming in over the last couple of weeks, and let me know which ones you want to see independent reviews of. As always, thank you guys for your time, and we'll talk again soon.